Well, hey there guys and welcome back. On this week's show, we're going to be learning how to set up a lock miter bit. Well, if you don't know what a lock miter bit is, it looks just like this. And basically what it does is it cuts your stock in such a way so that on your miter cuts at your corners, they actually lock together. That way the miter doesn't slide back and forth and they're quite secure. It makes for stronger miter joints and it makes for easier clamp ups when mitering things like say picture frames, boxes and that sort of thing. The problem with the lock miter bit is the setup. It's a two part setup in which you need to get the height of the bit exactly right and you need to get the fence set exactly right. And there's a lot of trial and error and there's a lot of people that don't understand how to set them up. And that's what we're going to tackle today. That's the setup we're going to tackle today. And we're going to start off by explaining exactly what I mean by the center of the bit. Well, the profile of a lock miter bit is something like this. And you'll have to excuse my artwork here, but it's just kind of a generalization of what it looks like. That is the, the bit essentially, or the profile of the bit. And I'll show you the shank here in just a second. There we go. Here's the shank. So the center of the bit is referred to the measurement between this point right here and this point right here. And it is this measurement divided by two. And for almost all lock miter bits, it ends up to be this point right there. So knowing that this is the center, what we need to do is on the side of our stock, we need to draw a center line and align our router bit or raise it until this corner of the bit here reaches that line. But there's a method to use to make sure that you have it aligned properly. So let's head over to the router table and roughly line up the height of our bit with a center line on our stock. Well, we just need to get our center of the bit lined up with our center line on our workpiece or on our stock. And for our purposes today, we're going to be using three quarter inch pine just for demonstration purposes. So this is roughly where we want it lined up. I've never hit it first try. Hopefully I don't hit it first try today because I want to show you how to adjust things. But with our bit set roughly at the height, we're gonna lock it down. And now we need to set our fence just roughly in position with our bit height roughly at the spot where we want it, we're going to move our fence forward. And as we get it forward, we're going to lay our stock horizontally like this or flat on our table, slide it up to our bit. And what we will find is that our level of the fence will be approximately correct when the edge of our straight edge here, sitting on top of the correct thickness of stock, just, and I mean just, kisses the edge of our bit. Just like that. Can you see there how we're just kissing that top 45? And once you get it to there, we're roughly in the right spot. You can lock your fence down and now we can make a test pass in order to uh, calibrate our height. Now, when you're running your stock through a lock miter bit, it leaves a sharp corner 
of a 45 up at the top. And what can happen is that corner can get eaten away and crushed as you feed your stock through, causing it to divot or dip in at this end. So what I would like to do is use a piece of, well, maple or some kind of hardwood with some double-sided tape, and we're going to attach it to our stock, in this case pine, flush on the end here. And that way we have a positive guidance of our maple along our fence and that sharp 45 won't be interfered with. Well, now that I have this pass done, I'm going to take it over to the table saw. I'm just going to rip off like an inch and a half of this just so I have this profiled section and then I'm going to cut it in half. All right, so we have our two pieces now and what we want to do is we want to put them together. We want to test for the fit. Now, if the bit height is correct, then this section over here and this section over here will be exactly on the same plane. We're a little bit raised on the left, so that tells me that the bit is at the wrong height. So with the 45 going this way on your joint, if this side is lower than this side, so if the left is lower than the right, then your bit is too high. In my case, the left side is higher than the right side, which means that my bit is too low. So you want to take a measurement of the difference here. And we'll just give that a quick measurement there. It looks like I'm going to measure both sides just to get multiple readings here. We're at about 0 0.023 inches. So what we need to do is we need to raise the router bit by half of that distance. So 0 0.011 kind of thing. And then take another test pass. Well, the one thing that I love about my Jessam router table here is the digital readout where I can actually look at it and raise it to something as minuscule as 0 0.011. So there we are. We've raised it up. And now that we have it raised, let's do that second pass. Don't forget to double side tape that straight edge on there to get a cleaner cut. So now with those adjustments, we've done the same thing, cut our pieces and we'll just put them together and we have a nice solid fit here and our edges here are flush. So that means now that we have our height of the bit set correctly. We don't have to do anything else with that. Now it's time to do something with the adjustment of the fence. Well, this is a very difficult thing to explain for me. And in fact, it kind of hurts my head just because I know how to do it. It doesn't mean it's easy to explain. But what we need to do is get a piece of stock, the same thickness as what you're using for your project, and you lay it flat on your table. And 
you need a straight edge. It can be a steel ruler or a straight piece of stock, it doesn't matter, but it will sit flat on top of your stock here and you slide it forward until it gets to the router bit. And here I'm actually touching it and I shouldn't be. I should be just a little bit back so that that straight edge just barely kisses that 45. So I'm going to make a few adjustments here. And once I get it, I'm going to tighten it down. That looks like it right about there. We're just, and I mean just, kissing that cutter. So we're going to tighten our fence down and double check it. It's still a little too much. You don't want that straight edge to be hitting. You want that straight edge to be just kissing it, just slightly. There we go, just like that. Now to double check, take your stock, put it up against the fence, and you want to run your straight edge along the edge here of this, and it should just come in contact here with that 45. Or just kiss it, I should say. And we're actually out a little bit there, so we're going to readjust and test again. And once you're happy with that, you need to make yet another test cut. So we're actually pretty good there. So we're going to make a test cut, but this time we're going to do it in the same way that you would do as if you were making a box. And if you don't know how that is, I'm going to explain it to you. Well, every 45 degree joint on a lock miter connection must have two components. One component is the same routing that we've done uh, so far with our test cuts being routing on the flat surface along the fence. Your second component that it requires is a piece that is run through our router table just like this up against the fence and through and when that happens those two joints come together in the middle now my suggestion is to make wider pieces when you're running a lock miter so what i mean by that is if you're going to make a four inch wide box don't run a four inch wide piece run a nine inch piece and then rip your sections from that to make your box. But for this, this is just demonstration and just testing and showing you how to do it. So what I'm going to do is I'm pretty sure that I've got this set up now. I'm going to run through the first plat pass, which is the horizontal pass or the flat pass. Um, as we've done so far, and then I'll show you the next step. Now, as I said earlier, our next pass is run like this. And you can see I still have our maple straight edge there just to help support things. So I'm gonna run this through and then show you how the joint looks. With 
the two pieces, route it now. The joint just fits together like this and the corner is perfect. It's at 90 degrees. We don't have any hang over here. You know what, let me get a square and show you how this is, is 90 degrees here. We'll just hold that together and put a square in there and that is bang on the money. That is square, no messing around. And look, I'm holding this thing with one finger. So clamping this is just a dream. And we've got a nice crisp 90 degree corner on the outside of our joint. And that my friends is how you set up a lock miter bit. And there you have it. Lock miter bits. Guys, as I said earlier in the video, you require both a vertical run and a horizontal run for each 45. So my suggestion would be to make, say, these two sides um, the vertical and these two sides the horizontal pass. That way you don't have to worry about, okay, I got a horizontal here and I need a vertical and then down here was another horizontal. You don't have to bother with it. If two sides have only vertical passes and two sides have only horizontal passes, they will always match together and they will always work. Guys, as I also said, it's much easier with this bit to run a wider piece. So you may want to consider in planning your project that your stock is actually double the width adding a little extra for the curve of the blade, but double the width of the height of your box or your frame or whatever you're making. And that way, of course, you're able to run a thicker piece and then cut it down to get the sides that you need for your project. Using the double-sided tape on that front edge against the fence or against the table is just a, a spectacular way to do it only because it gives the piece extra support so that it's not crushing down on that sharp 45 point that you've now routed out. Um, you don't have to do it like that, but you will get better results if you use a sharp edge like that. Don't use something like a steel edge, guys, or something um, that that is is damaging to your bit should you have the wrong setup or the wrong height you wouldn't want that router bit cutting into or being damaged by that sharp steel edge so only use something that can be routed whether it be say a uhmw plastic or whether it be as i used a piece of maple I don't know what else there is to say about this other than it is a fantastic way of joinery and if you haven't tried it you might want to give it a whirl. It is a pain in the neck to set up but yet once you get it set up it really does yield some spectacular results. <laughs> Guys. I want to thank you for joining me this week. It's been a lot of fun. Um, there has been a lot of questions from people out there on the forums and that sort of things about setting up a lock miter uh, because of its confusion. And I hope that this has kind of settled things for you and made it a little easier and enabled you to understand how to set it up a little better. As always, though, if you have any questions, just drop them below and I'll do my best to answer. I'll help out in any way that I can, if I can, as always. Guys, if you haven't already, please don't forget to like and subscribe. Click that bell so that you get notifications of future programs on the show. And I hope you're going to join me next week when I bring you yet another Alternative Tuesdays.